time now for a look at some of the stories making headlines around the world, and I'm delighted to be joined by Joseph Dankwa, the activist, and, well, you've done all sorts, haven't you, Joseph, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how's things. that for a welcome? That's right. Let's have a look at this day. Yeah. Um, Nigeria's leading newspaper, and Buhari's lamenting an empty treasury. Uh, it's not really the, the main headline there, but I'm interested by what he's been saying and doing, because he certainly looks as though he is his own man. He's doing things that previous presidents haven't done, like sort of uh, making courtesy calls to the State House correspondents. Do you think he's uh, following the right path? Well, he wants to try and give a different face to the government now being, you know, being um, being done in Nigeria. He wants to give, he wants to be hands-on, pragmatic, and he wants to give Nigeria a new look towards government. You want to see governments being open, transparent and accountable to the people. And I believe that by him meeting the press, telling them what he wants to do, he's going directly to the people. And I think this is a very right, very good thing to do because Nigerians have never trusted their governments all along. They've always seen governments as being distant institutions and have never been part of them. So with him going directly to the people through the media, it shows that he's taking the government to the people. Do you think he's uh, got an awful lot to do in a short period of time before his sort of honeymoon period runs out? Yeah, I was always saying that his honeymoon period is up to six months. He has to put in place the structures to launch his agenda fully within the four years. He's got to get his trusted yes, yes. men around him, yeah. men old, and women, of course, to yes. do it. I'm also uh, quite interested by the fact that he was speaking on the calibre of his media team. Uh, he's been uh, talking about the appointment of Femi Adesina yeah. uh, from the media to serve as his special advisor. Now, this is the guy who, I think last week, was describing Bihari as a fine wine. Uh, it was actually made a statement on the uh, State House. Old wines are taken and the President Bahari we have today is a man like old wine that has got tastier. As a Muslim, do you think he's sort of happy to be uh, compared to a fine wine? Well, maybe he's not saying in terms of, you know, it's not literal. But he says he's trying to, as he's matured, he's become experienced, he's become very, you know, savvy, and he's becoming astute as, it, as the days go by. So maybe the analogy to wine may be a little bit far away, but then he's trying to be, give a point, saying that with years he's matured into one of uh, maybe Nigeria's hopefully trusted leaders. Let's hope that he's not corked at any point. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look <laughs> at USA Today. Uh, on the right-hand side of the page, Marines may hitch a ride with foreign vessels. Now, this is down to the fact that the US Navy is claiming to have a shortage of ships. And this has a particular interest to activities in Western Northern Africa. Yes. Um, the, you know, there's, there's there's to be shortage of vessels, and now the Americans, the U.S. want to start using foreign vessels in conjunction with uh, missions they want to carry out within North and Western Africa, and it's more or less like a rapid response towards um, the. So um, if they can't get, get their own ship there, they will have to yes. work with other people. Yes, and I think that is very good in terms of like it brings about military cooperation and partnership. But isn't this uh, isn't this sort of cutbacks? through the back door, if you like, because there are concerns that, say, the UK might drop below 2% of GDP yeah. in terms of its uh, defence capability. Aren't we just sort of uh, joining forces with other people in order to bring overall costs? Because obviously military is an awfully expensive business. Yes, well, you see, I mean, it shows that, I mean, Cutbacks generally across the board, across the board in all other in all the world is 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 taking an effect because you can look here and here there's a, coming up 12 billion worth of cut and America too they are cutting back on their military expenditure and it shows that across the board is affecting it. But then looking at it generally, uh, this is not a bad idea because they realised that in 2012 the inability to 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 salvage the um, the attack in Benghazi was due to their inability to get forces in there on time. Mm. So they said that they had to circumvent such a thing happening again. Make to sure. Here, make sure that you have forces on standby in foreign ships. But then I think they need to, but more or less put more money into military expenditure. It's, it's quite a shortage because the yeah. Navy in the States, they've got 30 amphibious ships, but they say it needs 38 to fulfil yes. its fighting requirements. Well, they need I was going to go and have a look at um, 
the, the Greek story, but we've done that. We've yes, done that. So let's yeah. have a look at the Times of India. Yeah. And the government proposing tax breaks for debit and credit card payments. Yes. Yeah, th th this is a very interesting story. I mean, looking at it, it's, it's a way of trying to curb corruption in terms of like, you know, because you know, it's something in Africa, for instance, in Africa, it's mostly, we mostly use cash. Yeah. Cash is king. Yes. And you know... And it's invisible. Yes. And you can pop it in your pocket and nobody where it knows yes. where it's come from or goes to. Yes. And I think this is a way, if they were to implement this in Africa, it would go a long way to, you know, not maybe large scale corruption, but these, you know, petty, petty things with the, you know, like low level corruption, which then eventually could grow into major corruption scandals, which I think we should take it on. But Africa is trying and it's doing its best because most banks are now issuing out, you know, debit and credit cards and credits online, but gradually. But parts of Africa is using mobile payments already in, in, yeah. in some parts of the continent. It, it, it's bigger than the banking system. Uh, they, they're doing transfers with their mobile phones. So is that already happening and maybe this is something that will come in the future? Yes, it's already happening, but then this could be, as you've got these mobile transfers happening, this could also be done in conjunction with it, you know, with time, these things will have to be sold to the people, and they'll catch on. And and you know, we, you know, Africa is there a we, trust in the banking system that people well, know that their card is going to work? now people are beginning to trust trust the banking system because it, previously when you used to have military governments who could just go into people's bank accounts and raid their bank account, it's that that era is, is gradually gone. going, and so therefore you know the banking system is beginning to have its trust from the people, and therefore the system is going to be it's going to protect people's savings and their livelihood. But it looks as though having tax breaks could be the way forward. Forward. Yes, it can be as a an incentive. To help yes. To do it. yes, yes, and uh, it's very good. Uh, Joseph, thank you very much for taking me through some of the papers. I wish we could speak to you more, but no doubt we'll see you again soon on this day live. Thank you. You are watching this day live here on Arise News. Plenty more ahead. I'll be back at the top of the hour with a full roundup of all the day's news. So don't go away. We'll just take a short break. Stay with us. <laughs>